Now, as every video gamer knows, video games have grown by leaps and bounds in terms of providing users with a realistic experience. Maybe I'm a video game now. Who knows? My guest is taking things to the next level. He's developing software that uses real people's images to generate lifelike characters that could be used for popular game franchises. They already are used for those for Grand Theft Auto, for example. Joining us now for a CEO sit-down is Robert Gehorsum. He is the head of Image Metrics. Good to have you with us, Robert. Right, thanks, thanks so much for joining us. Glad to be here. Now, just so that people understand a little bit more about Image Metrics, we were talking just before you came on that this started out really as a life sciences company having to do with, well, you explain right. the genesis. So about 10 years ago, a group of researchers in Manchester, England, specialists in computer vision and machine learning, developed this technology, which was originally used for medical imaging. About five or six years ago, uh, we realized that the, that the application for this that would be very compelling and unique would be in generating 3D animation directly from 2D video. So we capture an actor's performance, have it processed with our software, and then you can generate uh, the kinds of animation on characters you can see in, as you said, Grand Theft Auto, Assassin's Creed, even in films like Benjamin Button, The Wolfman, or Splice. So you're able to use the software that powers all this to create, so just out of, almost th literally out of thin yeah. air, the various facial expressions, the movements, the shadings, the texture uh, that look real, but they're not real at all. That's correct. So we were able to recognize out of video, which of course is 2D, what the 3D meaning is. Um, and then that, that becomes data, non-visual, just numbers essentially. We take that and it's, it's transferred back into animation software and it can be applied not just to the actor's face uh, necessarily, but to a, any other character or a creature, for example. And is this very you know, memory intensive? Does this mean that you've got to have incredibly powerful computers to do this? Or has the sort of advent of you know, less expensive but powerful computers made it easier for you to create these kinds of scenarios? Well, that's, that's actually a great point. So today we do some of the, the processing on, on servers. It's not uh, crazily intensive, but it's not yet on, a, hasn't yet been on a desktop PC. But that's changing because our technology is now moving more into the consumer in real time world so that it can be done uh, locally, basic, basically. See, I knew I was going to give you that segue because <laughs> I know that you've also purchased a company recently and there is an eye towards breaking into the consumer market so that it's not just something yes. that you're going to watch either in a feature length movie or on a video game. It is going to be something that people will be able to use themselves to create an online persona. They'll be able to create themselves and show it to their friends, show it to anyone one on the internet and it will be 3D. That's exactly right. Even more than just showing, they'll communicate this way. So w when we looked at really what's going on in the internet, it's social networks, it's online gaming, it's chat, it's online video, it struck us that this was the time to make this move. And so we recently acquired a company called Big Stage, which has a technology that lets you from one photo in 15 seconds, 30 seconds, construct a 3D avatar of yourself and put it into any kind of application. We then integrate that with our technology, which is all about the animation, and suddenly you have a sort of end-to-end -end solution for personal expression. On the Why internet. do I keep thinking of Max Headroom? He was way ahead of his time he in a certain way. He was ahead of his time. We would welcome him back. So <laughs> if you were able to use this, you could give people a smile if they didn't necessarily have one, or you could even, what, combine it with other 3D animation so you could put them in different situations as well? Right, absolutely. So if you're playing a game, for example, today with other people, today your character character moves around but doesn't express itself. Now, when I'm playing, as, as I have my webcam in front of me, as I smile, as I frown, as I, whatever expression I make, other people will see that in real time, no matter what my character looks like. What about how this would be applied to mobile technology? That seems to be a very hot area right now, of course, whether it's an iPad, an iPhone, or an Android device. Is this now going to be translated into these mobile kinds of Ab communications? Absolutely. So this is the year that um, smartphones and tablets have forward-facing cameras. The iPhone is the first, the Motorola Zoom on the tablet side is another, and in a year, that's gonna be the standard piece. And the processing power 
of those devices will really let us put this technology into there. So you won't necessarily have to do your hair in order to have a public mm -hmm. face. You can have your avatar do it all for you. Exactly. That's exactly right. Well, it'll be very easy to getting up in the morning. I hope so. What, what, what kinds of studios are interested in this kind of technology? Because I imagine that they want people to be able to do, use these, these things, but don't necessarily want to have to pay everybody. Right. So we, as you might imagine, talk to or work with all, all the people you might expect. We work in the game side with Sony, Electronic Arts, Activision, Take-Two, and their Rockstar subsidiary. Obviously, we talk to studios such as uh, DreamWorks or ILM, and we'll see what happens there. All right. I want to thank you very much, uh, Robert uh, Gehorsem, uh, sharing your thoughts, the chief executive of ImageMetrics. Thanks very much. Thanks Appreciate very it. Much.